بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين أما بعد أحييكم بتحية الإسلام أيام أيمن محمد بكر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته In response to the wish of a friend today's video will discuss liquidity risk and its relation to Islamic financing May Allah make it of benefit to you before we proceed, please share this information by commenting, liking, and sharing. Let's start ala barakatillah. So, what is liquidity? It is the ability of a firm, company, or individual to pay its debts without suffering considerable losses. Then what is liquidity risk? Liquidity risk is a financial risk pertaining to the difficulty of converting an asset, security or commodity into cash within a certain period of time without affecting its market price. This definition prescribes market liquidity risk. In other words, it is the inability to exit a position before an asset's price falls. On the other hand, there is another type of liquidity risk. Funding liquidity risk. Funding liquidity risk is the risk that involves the inability to pay the liabilities leading to default. Let's take a typical example of market liquidity. If you have a real estate, you might not be able to sell it and convert it to cash before two years. Otherwise, you might offer it at lower than its market price in order to sell it faster. It is difficult to sell real estates fast, hence why they are termed illiquid assets. The question is, what are the common causes of high market illiquidity Sorry, of high market liquidity risk. The gap between the buyers and sellers prices for an asset is called bid-ask spread. Why bid-ask spreads are common causes for high liquidity risk? Time is a factor also. The sooner a seller wants to sell an illiquid asset, the higher is liquidity risk. Let's take another example. During the financial crisis in 2007-2008, drops in the value of stocks and other securities made investors rush to sell their holdings. This rush to exit widened the bid-ask spreads and caused severe decline in prices, leading to further market illiquidity. All that we have been talking about was from the perspective of an investor holding assets, whether securities or commodities. Liquidity risk concept of a company slightly differs. Investors, managers, and creditors use liquidity measurement ratios to determine the level of risk a company is at. In a sense, they look at the company's financial statements to compare its short-term liabilities with its liquid assets. The higher the gap between the short-term liabilities and liquid assets, the higher is its liquidity risk. A company would thus want to sell some of its assets or seek some, some other form of funding or revenues in order to cover its liabilities. If it wants to remain attractive for its investors, it needs to do that. Financial institutions look at liquidity risk even from a yet different lens. That's because their business model revolves around borrowing money. They are constantly scrutinized to determine whether they can cover their debts without suffering losses. So they rely less on short-term funding, which tends to mature quickly, leading to high liquidity risks. 
Liquidity risks for banks arises from the mismatch between supply of and demand for funds. Supply of funds comes from customer deposits, repayment of credit, borrowing from financial markets, interest and non-interest income, sales of banks' assets. On the other hand, demand for funds comes from customer withdrawals, demand for credit, loans, interest and non-interest expenses, and interest for depositors. Islamic banks do not operate on an interest-based mode of financing. Our Islamic Sharia requires to abandon interest, usually, and therefore Islamic banks operate using different modes of financing. There are several modes that Islamic banks operate with, which include equity-based mode, or profit loss sharing bearing where the principal and agent relationship is on the basis of capital provider and entrepreneur or what is called mudaraba this is referred to in english as silent investment also we have sales based financing with cost plus or what is called in arabic murabaha also there is joint venture or what is called musharaka and we have the lease based mode of financing or what is called ijara so these are some of the modes of financing in one study the authors found that islamic banks maintain higher liquidity risk higher liquidity than conventional banks by the way, you will find the link for the studies I mentioned here in the description below. The complexity of financing in Islamic banks and its various modes of financing requires from the banks to be aware of its financial financing modes in order to come up with an adequate liquidity risk management plan. Banks that use mudaraba based financing, for example, in principle are insolvency proof however they are still prone to the asset and liability mismatch because the demand deposits have a guaranteed capital value and is redeemable at par and on demand in one study as one as another example it was found that in Murabaha there is low liquidity risk to sum up due to the unique nature of assets and liabilities of islamic banks and due to the different modes of financing islamic banks have to have different set of liquidity risk management plans we come to the end of this video i hope it was useful and informative if you have any questions or would like to contribute to this subject I will be honored to see them in the comments below. This is Ayman Muhammad Bakr. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.